Hi guys, welcome to this fifth part of Angular 16 tutorial series. In the last part, we talked about directives, mainly the built-in attribute directive. This video is all about the structured directive and this is the one of the most important video of this tutorial series because the concepts that I'll be using in this video will be used in every kind of project you intend to build in your career using Angular. All right. So the structured directive includes mainly three things. Uh, one is for conditionals like the if else statements. You might be using if else in other programming languages and you must have used if else statements in uh, JavaScript as well. Then we can actually loop through multiple elements in our HTML in Angular. And third one is the switch statements. You might have used the switch statements in other languages as well. So I'll be showing you how we can add conditions. Uh, in HTML, add uh, iterate through multiple elements in our HTML file and also the switch statements. So first of all, I have actually created a new project because the first project was uh, becoming messy because of too, ma too many elements on the one page. So I'm going to come here and uh, here I'm going to create a new variable. So I'm going to first create a variable is logged in. Let's give it a type boolean equals to false. All right. So let's save it now and uh, also let's create a new variable just to show you uh, one way data binding uh, just to show you the logged in username. So I'm going to give my name Umer. Okay. Let's save it now in this component in this HTML file. I'll be showing you how we can actually create uh, different elements based upon conditions. So I'm going to write the welcome and then the username. This is what I have actually written down over here. So it has shown welcome Omer, which is the value coming from this variable. All right. And uh, now I'm going to actually create uh, another div. All right. And in this div, please log in. to view the content all right so both of these will be visible over here but what if i want to keep both of these div elements in my file the html file and uh, i want to show the first div element if is logged in is true currently it's false but if is logged in is false i want to only show the second div and hide the first div all right so i can use a directive which we call it ng if so if statements in angular uh, we can actually use the ng if directive using the static ng capital i and if statement okay if and inside it we can have different variables that provide us some boolean values or we can have some conditionals like the a equals to true uh, or a equals to five or anything like that so currently we have the variable name is logged in let's save it now you can see that is logged in we are not actually logged in because this is logged in is false so this false is actually being added over here so based upon this ng if condition it is actually hiding this complete div element which is not even visible over here and in the second div i can actually write copy this paste it and if i'm not logged in then I'm going to show it over here. So if I save it, you can see that um, I'm not logged in. That's why it's showing over here. Now let's log it in. So I'm going to change its value to true. Now I'm logged in. Let's see that if this div, the second div gets hidden and the first div should be visible. Let's save this component. And now you can see that the only the first div is visible and the second div is hidden. Uh, this is some kind of practical example that I have shown you. Obviously, in real application, we won't be handling login logout like this. This is just to show you how we can use the ng if statement over here. All right. So uh, we can have another properties as well, just like the if conditions, like the or uh, operators or the and operators. All right. So uh, let me show you. So if I just copy it and paste it below, um, and uh, I'm going to show you logged in content okay so if the user is logged in then the logged in content is going to be visible and i can add the and operators 
or I can add the or operator just like we can do it in our if else statements in vanilla JavaScript. So let's say I'm using the and and I'm going to give it true. So it means that both of these variables should return true. Actually, I've directly written true over here, but I can directly write the variable name over here as well. So if I change it to false, it will be hidden because both of these statements are not true. So this is how we can use the and operator and or operator. Now let's talk about how we can write the else statements along with the if statements in Angular. All right, so I'm gonna copy this line and I'm going to paste it over here and uh, it is actually showing a welcome back username okay you can see that it is showing welcome back let me co comment above line so you don't get confused now welcome back Omer it's visible now I want to write an else statement that in case that uh, this locked in is not true then I'm just going to write the semicolon. I can write the else keyword and then I can write the logged out. I can write anything over here and what this logged out variable is referring to. This is referring to uh, an ID of a different element. So let's say that I can write the div or uh, for else statement angular recommend us to use the ng template and then I can write the hash and here I can name it logged out okay so please uh, log in all right so if I save it uh, you will see that this is logged in is true that's why the else statement is not visible so if it is false it's gonna go to the else statement logged out true so it's gonna find out in this particular HTML file that where this logged out exists in this HTML cell file so here it will find this and it will just trigger its value whatever is inside it we can have the multiple elements as well inside it or directly add different content inside it okay so let's change is logged in to false back and let's see and now you can see that the please login is visible this is coming from here it means that this else statement got triggered and this is how we can use the ng if statements for a uh, conditional rendering of different elements we can have this these operators we can have these else statements as well uh, to uh, mimic the behavior of if else if and else statements of vanilla javascript let's now talk about loops let's say that we have hundreds of students list or we have the hundreds of phone numbers and we need to show it in our UI are we going to write all the elements for the hundreds of user interface let's say the li element of the HTML are we going to write that hundred times in our HTML no we need to find a way so that we can write that li element one time and we can iterate through with different values all right this is where the ng for directive comes in so let's first add an array over here which we will be iterating through so let's say I'm going to create an array of string which is of type an array and equals to and I can write Omer I can write Ali uh, let's add the third one okay so I have added that and now I can actually I trade through it in my HTML and in my HTML let's create a div and uh, uh, rather than div let's create a ul and now I'm going to create an li and inside it I can actually show up the values one by one so in order to iterate through this uh, generate this li element multiple times based upon the length of this string we can use a directive called the static ng4 equals to and we can define a variable and we can name it anything to it so name of and the name of that variable that we have created in our typescript file which is the names okay so this is the names variable so we have got this name variable which we can use over here using the interpolation name and if i save it you will see that all of these uh, values are being shown from this array this is looking great and uh, this is how we can actually iterate through this li element is being generated again and again based upon the length of these names and also if we want to fetch the index number we can add this uh, semicolon we can add an 
uh, i uh, we can name anything to this variable and this index keyword actually will give us the name of that index so i can write the interpolation and i and now you can see that it will show us the index numbers of all of these uh, array values which is coming from here so this is how we can iterate through multiple values and it is not actually required to directly write uh, these values we can have the further a lot of elements within this li element that we want to iterate through it using this ng4 directive next let's talk about the ng switch directive in angular so let's say that we want to have different grades for the student and based upon the grade we want to show different messages so i'm going to create a variable grade and it is of type string and uh, let's give it b grade initial value okay and uh, i'm gonna come over here and i'm going to create a div and inside this div i'm going to create different p tags and if the grade is a i'm going to actually render the excellent if the grade is b i'm going to give it good and if the grade is not a and b i'm going to just give it unknown okay and this unknown is going to be printed when the none of the grade is available and uh, i'm just uh, giving it the default value in the real other programming languages like vanilla javascript we have the default keyword that we can use to actually uh, print something or trigger some kind of code when any of the switch statement does not trigger so first of all in the div i need to write the ng switch directive and i need to give it the value of the variable the name of the variable which i have written in my component this is the grid okay and inside it i can have these p tags and i can use the static ng switch and then the case equals to uh, double quotes and then the single quote and i will be writing a all right if the switch case is a it means that the, if the grade a uh, variable contains a then this is going to get triggered and rest of the p tags are not going to get triggered but we need to add these ng switch case to the other p tags uh, not the last one so i'll be actually updating it just in a moment so if it is b then i'm going to just print good and uh, if it is a then uh, i'm just going to i don't need to give any value to it instead i will be giving it ng switch default keyword okay so let's save it now and here you can see that it has printed good and rest of the couple of p tags are ignored and not even rendered on the ui let's try to change it to a and let's see now it's showing excellent and let's try to give it c it should print unknown all right so our switch statement is working fine we can have any number of ng switch cases over here and at the end it's always a good practice to write the default statement as well so in this video we have talked about three directives structural directive ng if loops and the switch statements if you have liked my video don't forget to subscribe my channel hit the like button and hit the bell icon as well so you get the notifications for upcoming video thank you so much for watching guys see you in the next videos on this awesome angular 16 tutorial series